Welcome. After learning about the absorption and stripping and their analysis, in this particular lecture, we shall be looking into some problems on the absorption and stripping. So, what we shall be learning to how to compute the minimum solvent rate and the height of a packed bed. So, let us see the problem 1. In this, we are seeing that we have some petrochemical plant where the gas contains about 4 percent cyclohexane and 96 percent inerts. This has to be treated with a non-volatile absorption oil in a packed tower and it is required to remove 98 percent of the cyclohexane from the feed gas and some suitable solvent will be used to remove this cyclohexane and the, it is assumed that the solvent is fresh that means it does not have any cyclohexane to start with. If the feed gas is about 80 kilo mole per hour, we have to calculate the minimum solvent rate and here we are given the equilibrium relationship in terms of the mole ratio of the particular component in this case cyclohexane in the vapor phase and the liquid phase. Now, let us see how to go on analyzing this problem. So, first let us recapitulate this is the typical packed column packed tower therefore, in this some absorption is going on. So, on this particular thing we are given this V i are given to us that this is the feed which have to be treated uh, and here we are using a solvent. So, we are also given this particular thing. So, these two information are available to us and here also we are given that how much we want to extract how much cyclohexane is want to be extracted. So, we also know the outlet com concentration of the cyclohexane in the vapor phase. So, here we are given the vapor phase flow rate that is V 1 as 80 kilo mole per hour and this uh, will change from v this V 1 will be different from this V 2 because cyclohexane has been taken out from this particular vapor phase. So, and this is the mole fraction it is given here and this is the equilibrium relationship in terms of the mole ratio and if we use this relationship and we put the various values of x uh, it is seen that if we are going from 0 to about 0 0.12 and corresponding to each x we are having the values of the y. And here then we plot this x and y over here in terms of the mole ratio. So, this is the equilibrium the curve. Now, we find that the rate of the solute input is how much? It is the y 1 into v 1 that is 80 into 0 0.04 that is 3.2 kilo mole per hour of the cyclohexane is going inside the column with the vapor. And now, we find out the cyclohexane free vapor flow rate that is V 1 into 1 minus Y 1. It is mentioned in the problem that the rest of the components can be taken to be inert. That means, we are assuming that those components are not being absorbed by the solvent. So, this is the cyclohexane free vapor flow rate and this is coming out to 76.8 kilo mole per hour and we see that this value has to be less than the total vapor flow rate because in this particular we do not have the cyclohexane present and this particular flow rate will remain constant throughout the particular column. Now, from the given value of the mole fraction we find out the mole ratio from this formula and we find that this is coming out to this value and once we know this mole fraction we find that y 2 is equal to the 20 percent is being uh, ejected out that is 98 percent is absorbed. So, if 20 this 20 percent of this is the this value which is coming out from the column and since the solvent is assumed to be fresh without any cyclohexane. So, we find that x 2 is equal to 0. So, that the mole ratio is also 0. Now, what we do we locate the x 2 O 2 x 2 y 2 on this particular uh, thing and here we find it is located here. Now, from this equilibrium relationship curve we find that there is some kind of a convexity towards the <coughs> top. 
So, because of this what we do that we simply draw a line from this thing which will be tangent to this particular curve and wherever it becomes tangent there we read that means, here we get the pinch point. Once this, this uh, operating line touches the equilibrium curve we get the pinch point. So, we get the pinch point and for this particular thing we find out the slope of the operating line and this slope will be able to give us the minimum solvent flow rate. So, we find out this particular slope and we know that this slope is L s by V s mean and this is equal to 0 0.19. We are given the value of the V s. So, once we know the value of the V s, we can find the value of the L s that is the minimum flow rate of the solvent. Now, we come to the second problem. In this problem, we are given a gas mixture with 10 percent SO2 and 90 mole percent of air at one atmosphere total pressure at 30 degree centigrade and this has to be scrubbed using water to remove 97 percent of the sulfur dioxide in a tower with a packing which is having the ceramic packing rashig ring and this is the 25 mm. So, we know that there are different types of packing which are made from different types of material. So, in this case we are using rashig ring and which is made from which is of size of 25 millimeter. The feed gas flow rate is about 1500 kg per hour. So, we are required to calculate the minimum liquid rate and the height of the packing and here we are given the equilibrium relationship in terms of the mole fractions in the two phases and here we are given the volumetric mass transfer coefficient values for the liquid phase and the vapor phase in terms of kilo mole per cubic meter per second and per delta x or delta y is the driving force per unit driving force in the liquid phase and in the vapor phase. Now, we go to solution what we do we first we find out the average molecular weight by summing up the product of the mole fraction and the individual molecular weight. So, we get this, this as the average molecular weight of the gas and here we are given the vapor flow rate in terms of kg per hour and we divide it by the molecular weight to get in terms of the kilo mole per hour. And then we do what we do we plot this equilibrium curve in terms of the mole ratios capital X and capital Y. So, we are given the value of the mole fraction in the incoming vapor as 0 0.1 and so we can find out the value of the mole ratio in the incoming gas as 0 0.111 and this we find out somewhere it will be located here. Now, to find out the minimum uh, flow rate what we do that we first find out that it will be wherever it intersects with this equilibrium curve I, at this point we have to find out that vapor minimum solvent flow rate we have to find out. So, what we do first we find out the V s and that is equal to V 1 into 1 minus Y 1 this is Y 1 and we get this is the value of the 41.7 kilo mole per hour and then we find out that how much sulfur dioxide is entering this is the uh, this is the uh, value of the V 1 into this point 1 that is the uh, total molar flow rate into the mole fraction. So, this is the amount of sulfur that is going inside and 3 percent of this particular sulfur goes into outlet. So, this 3 percent of this particular value is this point 0.14 kilo mole per hour is coming out from the packed column and 97 percent is getting absorbed that is the rest of the things is getting absorbed by the uh, solvent. Now, y 2 is again given by in terms of the 0 0.14 divided by the V s and this is the mole ratio of sulfur dioxide at the outlet of the column and this is located somewhere here because we are assuming that there is no uh, uh, this solvent is fresh. So, that is there is no sulfur dioxide in the solvent. So, x 2 is equal to 0. So, we locate this x 2 y 2 here and then we make a straight line operating line which will be touching the intersection point of this horizontal line from the y 1 and wherever it intersects okay, from this is the operating line for the minimum solvent flow rate and if we can find out the 
value of this particular um, uh, this uh, slope, we can get the value of the minimum solvent flow rate. And here we find that we drop a horizontal and vertical line from this point of intersection and this will give us the value of the x 1 max that is the highest amount of the uh, sulfur dioxide in the liquid phase and that is coming out to be 0.00272 from this particular uh, graph. Once we know this y 1, y 2 etcetera, what we do? We now go with the uh, material balance which is same, same that y 1 minus y 2 divided by x 1 max by x 2, it is the slope of the particular line. So, this is nothing but the material balance and here from this we can find out the minimum solvent flow rate by plugging the values and this is coming, coming out to be this value. Now, the actual solvent flow rate will be more than this and as we learnt earlier, it is about 1.25 to 2 times the minimum flow rate. So, here we are assuming that it is about 1.25 times the minimum solvent flow rate and we are getting the actual uh, solvent flow rate on the solute free basis that is the sulfur dioxide free basis as this particular value. So, once we find that value, we make this uh, material balance and now what we do that in this case this V s L s we know now. Now, we are putting back the mole ratios in terms of the mole fractions and we find that we plug in the values over here we and we find the value of x 1 that is the amount of sulfur dioxide which is actually going with the liquid at the will be about this the mole fraction at the exit of the solvent. And from this we can find out the mole ratio of the sulfur dioxide at the solvent exit. And now, we come to the calculation of the height of the packing and here we go with this particular formula that we learnt earlier. This is the product of the height of transfer unit of the gaseous phase and the number of transfer units in the gaseous phase and height of transfer unit is given in terms of the uh, volumetric flow rate and the mass transfer coefficient and the specific surface area. We have been given the value of this k y a and this is the value of the uh, number of transfer units which we derived earlier. And so, this is these two things we have to find out to find out the height of the packing. Now, what we do now in this case we redraw the graph, but now this is in terms of the mole fraction and not mass fraction. So, we redraw the graph in terms of the mole fractions and we locate all these points x 1 y 1 and x 2 y 2 over here. Now, after locating these two, what we now do is this that we find this this minus k x a by k y a, this is the slope of a line which will be coming from this particular operating line to the equilibrium curve and we learnt as we learnt earlier that wherever a line with straight line with a slope of this comes from operating line to the equilibrium curve and where it touches it, we will be able to get the value of the interfacial concentrations in the liquid phase and the vapor phase. So, what we do that to find out this evaluate this particular integral, we have to go from y 1 to y 2 that means, we shall be arbitrarily taking many points between y 1 and y 2 and we shall be drawing these lines straight lines with this particular slope and we shall be uh, we shall be looking into this particular um, values which are there on this equilibrium curve and this equilibrium curve will give the values of the x y and y i between these two points y 1 and y 2. There is small mistake it will be there is a negative sign over here which has been missing over here. Okay. So, this is a that means, this is a negative slope. So, with this negative slope we shall draw many many lines and these uh, from this we can uh, see that we can suppose we are seeing that here we have the value of the x y uh, y y and this is the value we are getting and if we draw this kind of thing we find that we can span the whole range between the y 1 and y 2 and we get all this value of the interfacial uh, mole fraction in the gaseous phase. 
So, there is no need of reading out the value on the x axis, because in this particular uh, formula we do not need the value of the uh, x, only we need the value of the y. So, we get the other value of the y and from this using this formula and we know this is logarithmic uh, mean um, value. So, all these formula have been given earlier in our theory. So, we get the value of the f y and now after getting the value of the f y, we can either we can draw this particular curve that is f y versus y and find out the area under the curve as the integral value or you can also use some numerical technique like some Simpson's rule or trapezoidal rule etcetera to evaluate this particular integration. So, okay. so, you can use any numerical technique or graphical technique in this particular problem we are showing that how you can do it graphically. So, once we can find out the area um, below this curve then we find we can find out the n t u value and this area is coming out to be about 21.5. Now, to find out this particular n t u h t u now we will take this value of the uh, volumetric flow rate and because this now in this case we understand this that this is the volumetric uh, uh, flux. So, to find the flux what we have to do that we have to divide the flow rate uh, with the uh, area of cross section of the tower and which is given as this particular value. So, once we do it at the inlet and outlet side because we know that the uh, volumetric flow rate will change at the inlet and outlet. So, we find that uh, we are getting two values of the fluxes at the inlet and outlet of the gas. So, what we do we take the average of these two flow rates and this value we take uh, in the to calculate the value of the S T U. So, we take the value of this and k by a is this we just convert it in terms of the hour and we get the S T U value as 0.21 meter and from this we get the value of the height of the pack tower as H T U G into N T U G. So, this 0.21 into 21.5 and we get this 4.52. So, this is how we can get the uh, height of a packed column using this H T U N T U method for the absorption. You can know more about these methods from these uh, references. Thank you.